In 2005, a valve was fitted upside down on a flask containing highly toxic radioactive waste removed from a nuclear submarine. The flask travelled 400 miles on mainline train routes from the dockyard in Plymouth to Sellafield in Cumbria. Devonport Management Limited, who own the dockyard, have reportedly admitted that it was lucky that there were no radioactive leaks. The train travels through densely populated areas, frequently 20 metres from people's homes, schools and businesses. There are over 1,000 shipments of spent nuclear fuel on our rail systems every year. Nuclear power in the UK started um, really after the war and it was really all about getting plutonium for more nuclear weapons and then from that the sort of the spread of civil nuclear reactors uh, suddenly happened from the 50s through the 60s, 70s and into the 80s so we now have a fleet of about 11 or 12 working reactors here in the UK which account for about 18% of our electricity. In the southwest of England, there is a nuclear power station called Hinkley Point. Every week, out of public view, spent nuclear fuel is loaded into containers. These travel through country lanes to Bridgewater, where the container is then loaded onto a train. This happens every week. Containers are tested to, to an international standard and so you know they'll, they'll drive other trains into them, they'll drop them from a certain height and then expose them to, to say fire of I think about 800 degrees for half an hour. But it, there's no way that you can test for say terrorist activities or people shooting missiles at these things and that's the real worry if, if terrorists planted a bomb or there was a, a fire say in a tunnel where temperatures can get up to about 8,000 degrees, there's no guarantee that these uh, nuclear flasks will maintain their integrity and if something were to go wrong then the consequences could be potentially devastating. Spent nuclear fuel has been moving through our cities and countryside for over 30 years. There has been no official record of accidents during that time except for a derailment in the Bridgewater siding when, luckily again, the container was reported to have been empty. But there is an ever-present risk of human error. The nuclear waste trains have been running with such regularity that in 2006, Greenpeace produced a nuclear waste train timetable. According to their spokesperson, this timetable is still valid. Only, I think, five years ago, they increased the speed of these trains from 45 miles an hour to 60. And what the industry has been trying to do is to normalize these transports, to say to the general public, well, there's no difference between these and uh, any other rail freight that comes up. The more they can normalise it, the better they consider they are. But of course, the truth is that if one of these uh, flasks with the reactor fuel in were to be involved in a major accident, which you cannot rule out, there would be serious consequences. It's 
mind-boggling that these highly radioactive waste trains are left standing idle and are driving around the countryside without many people knowing about it. Commission for Greenpeace showed that if there was an accident with a, with a nuclear waste transport train in somewhere like London, it could kill up to about 8,000 people and we, we estimate about 190,000 people would have to be evacuated. The, the plume of radioactive dust could cover 100 square kilometres, which is a phenomenal amount of land. very easy for people to get close to them and, and perish the thought that, that terrorists would do this, but we know that the, the terrorists involved in the London atrocities had the plans for the size will be nuclear reactors. The industry has tried to downplay the seriousness of these particular consignments in that up until, I think, about 1997, they always used to be accompanied by a guards van on the back of the train, which seemed to us a fairly sensible sort of safety precaution. They've completely abandoned that now, so the trains travel up with no guards van. Although it contributes about 18% of our electricity, of our overall energy, it only accounts for about 3.6%. So nuclear does nothing to help heat our homes or power businesses and things like that. Um, you know, the government says, we, what, what are we going to do if the Russians turn off the gas taps? Well, about 6% of our gas comes from Russia. So again, it, it almost feels like the government is bullying people into accepting nuclear power. International nuclear watchdogs have said that the transport of nuclear waste is the most vulnerable aspect of the entire nuclear cycle when it comes to potential terrorist activities. And really, you ask any journalist worth their salt, and they'll, sh they'll tell you how easy it is to get close to these nuclear transport trains. time to get up here, it'll leave a power station down, say, in the southwest on one particular afternoon. It gets parked up overnight at another particular railway sidings in the Midlands, and then it continues its journey, sometimes joined on with um, other consignments that have come from other power stations, and arrives here usually towards the end of the week. effectively is that the fuel from the reactors from all the UK's power stations uh, is sent up here by rail and it arrives at the site and eventually it is put through what is best described as uh, a laundry service where uh, the fuel gets treated in nitric acid and goes through a whole number of chemical processes and they recover from that reactor fuel uranium and plutonium. That is the whole justification for doing it. And as the industry would say, we need these materials because they can be reused again as reactor fuel. The reality is, of course, that um, this material is not reused, or very, very little of it. 